Um, so Absolutely. right now, everybody is, is, is aware of the crazy crypto investor mad, madness, um, which is complete distraction for the true value of what blockchain, decentralization, smart contracts, um, democracy of data. These are the things that that some of these smarty pants are, have been building for, for several years now, uh, a good solid four years uh, in, in market at corporations. And they're not talking about using blockchain because no one cares. And some chief technical officers actually deploying it and making their supply chain work better. Um, and, and meanwhile, last February, all of a sudden, and NBA started playing with top shots and people started buying, you know, dunks and passes and whatever the case may be. And that's great. It's fun. It's, it's interesting. Get involved with it, but it's complete speculation. Uh, you're in, you're somewhere in between Las Vegas and Atlantic city and you're on your own, but you're, the point is it's great. However, you're missing the point if that's where you think it stops. So this company that I'd like to invite uh, the, the, the TRN community to lean into is that it's called Nuarca and it's N-U-A-R-C-A.com, Nuarca.com. And right now, very simply, it is a platform that has been in development in the market, in the black, blockchain company in the black for, for, for four years, um, and now can get investment money and grow this crazy into, this, into, the, into the NFT side of the business because they're making their money. That's the best way to get investment when you're making money you get better deals. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you a little about this platform and how it is differentiating itself um, as a way for a company to use it and uh, to, to deploy. Uh, it's not for investment, but you can do investment, NFT investment on it. It's for literally anything you want to do with the transactions that are happening in your industry. We're going to talk about sports and entertainment, because that is where the passion is, that is where the fans are, that is where the currency, whether it's money or ideas or passion um, for, for sports and your stars, uh, your talent, so to speak, are. Um, so that's what we're probably going to, I'm going to talk mostly about, and I'm going to move along just to give a couple of high level stuff. My goal for this conversation is just to whet your appetite to want to know more. I'm not going to explain everything to you because you can't, not in 15 minutes, not in 15 hours, but honestly, it's complicated. And the key about this platform, it allows you to do things without worrying about regulation and the front end brand and marketing and security. So that's, that's, there's the big picture. It's a platform folks and platform economy is where it's at. And are so, you uh, just out of curiosity, are you representing them? Are you doing sales for them? What's your role? Um, I'm, kind of an I'm an advisor. I do get compensation for them. They're a better mousetrap that has, I've worked with for years and now they're doubling down in this new ent entity, which is open to help have, have, have connectors from the TRN network to introduce it to their in industry. That is, that is, so answer number one is yes. So I'm, I'm in the game. Number two is everyone in this call should think about how it's going to change their world. And it is going to change their world. And you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to EB and you can listen to Pulver and Brogan and, and our good friend, uh, Shelly Palmer, and just believe that this is happening. Nuarka is a company that has opportunity to <coughs> resell, upsell, cross-sell, partner with, and you know that'll be worked out, but it, let's just get to coming to some of the big ways that they're posi positioning it. Um, I'm, this is not a presentation. This is just kind of a high level, so I can make make a dog's dinner out of it, as my grandmother likes to say. So this is all. This is taken literally, Eb from Shelley Palmer quote right out of his mouth, which is you got to understand. You have to the company. The winners will be companies that understand how to use data and, and manipulate data, period. And if you don't, you're going to be left behind. It's just too much is going digital at this point. And that's what this point is. Um, the size of the sports industry is huge. We don't have to go into details here. If anyone on this call has connections with sports leagues or teams or um, entertainment artists and talents, whether it's a painter or a singer or a band, let's talk about how you can actually introduce them to this and uh, make finder's fee or a revenue share, or whatever the case may be. That's the TRN way, right? Um, so I'm not going to go into details about the sports industry because that's, my, but what I'm going to share is one data point from Price Waterhouse, which does an exceptional sports and entertainment industry assessment every single year. But check this out. These are the priorities 
and they match the priorities of all marketers, by the way, but in the, in the sports industry specifically about what's important for them to focus on. And if you look in the middle, the gray live video content, it's way down in the, in the, in the, in the list of priorities after highlights and team generated content and user generated content and fan generated content. That's what you need to be able to manage. And that's hard to manage. If you go to Facebook, you don't own anything. If you go to Twitter, you don't own anything. If you go to your website, no one goes there. So the idea is to be building these, these tools and techniques for, for cryptocurrency sharing, image transferring. And that's what Newark has built. So again, this is Newark centric, but it's right in line with what people are prioritizing. And this is uh, uh, great support for our mission to allow the tool sets for this kind of interaction, user generated content, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'll go into it. Um, a lot of details here about sports, about the, the fluid fan and how they're beyond just a fan of, you know, badminton or baseball or whatever the case may be. They're multifaceted in the term fluid fan is something that gets thrown around. That's in essence what this is, meeting, giving them the tools that they want to live their life the way they wanna do, whether they're at a family picnic one day or at a baseball uh, game the next. Um, the growth we've all seen, Here's a, some, some data about the size of the marketplace. Over the last few years, it's been growing steadily. And this is the business that Newark has been from an enterprise corporate innovation, uh, corporate innovation um, uh, let's call it supply chain uh, tool set. And now it, it, this year it's taken off because of uh, the, 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 the fandom, the, uh, I don't know, the um, musk, muskiza muskization, Elonization of, of, of the whole drama. Um, and that's why it's taken off. Um, so it's about leagues and teams and talent and fan and community. I'll say that again. It's about the entity itself, the league, the team being interacting with the league, the, 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 uh, the talent, the, 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 uh, the, the um, giving them at the, at the center of this entire thing of an ability to control their, their brand and their destiny and get paid for these things versus not getting paid. Um, and, and then obviously the fan and the community works through, through the talent themselves and the, and the, and the, uh, the artist or the athlete. Uh, there's an interesting slide here to give some, uh, another big picture thing is if you look at where we are right now, we're very, very early stage. And in and, and, and next five years, several years, it's growing exponentially because people are using a superior mousetrap, so to speak, to make transactions, whether it's monetary or just you know, sharing an asset. The winners will be not only those who can manage the data, but also who have executed before and they're grownups in the room that are worried about things like regulation. It's huge. They're worried about things like um, overuse of energy. The platform that Newark uses with Matic, it's called M-A-T-T-I-C. It's, it's, it's not using any more energy as, in, as reg regular computing is. It's just, you know, you use computing power, but it's not in anything like the Ethereum insane. You got to light up a whole block just to mint, you know, a picture or something. I mean, literally, it's, it's, it's quite ridiculous. This is not that. And that's why it's, we, can, can, we continue to move on. Um, and, and, and marketers and branders don't have to worry so much about it. It also covers uh, the, 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 the actual look and feel and design, the presence that marketers and salespeople want to have. You, know, you don't have to build stuff. It, it works off the platform and you can generate this, this content um, through the platform without having to you know, be a full service tech group or a full service agency. Um, so full service agencies obviously are, are ones who are gonna to want to play with this just like HubSpot did with their uh, project. I'm bringing this to agencies so they can be Nuarka uh, approved kind of thing or you know, a partner. A um, couple other things, how much time do I have? Uh, you have uh, five minutes and 22, no, six minutes left. Um, do you want to open up to some questions? I actually had a question that um, if you could give an example to make it more concrete, I think it would be really helpful. Okay, so um, this is a presentation literally in the hand, so don't tell anyone about it, everybody. Um, for the um, Premier Lacrosse League, and what they're doing is we are doing this. This is back and forth. This, this is this is here's the, the the answer to the question that you just asked for Mike, which was um, Premier Lacrosse League will get a branded engagement site, including a mobile app, NFTs for fans to engage in, and they can buy. So it's very simple. That's what they want, right? That, that they're thinking of that because that's what they see at NBA having. 
they, they're going to get a lot more than that, as you'll see. They'll get 85% of the revenue uh, for the first year. And we're going to, it changes as it goes on. We can share the revenue. Maybe sponsors get involved with it. So it gets diluted, but that's okay. And then in the secondary market where someone takes a picture, sells it for a dollar or a million dollars, that secondary market is who, who buys it from them, right? So that the jury's still out and how that's working these days when people buy crazy stuff. Do they put it in their wall or do they sell it? So we built a 3% fee uh, um, uh, a revenue share in that as well as they go down to the secondary market third and third market and beyond um so, so this Newark, essentially allow people the fans to capture what would prior to this be licensed or um content and own it so that they can share it own it resell it exactly that- if if they are in the stands and they take a picture and they, it's, it's their original content and so i'm going to i'm going to jump ahead here for a second and say here's the here's a visual for what what happens uh, with uh, PLL, they get a fan engagement portal, and that's what we're building for them, right? Branding is theirs, 100%. Athlete talent, they get to have their control of their assets. Uh, the league has, and and, and their uh, competitions, they're all intact, and they control all of the look and feel and design of it, um, whether it's special events or just promotions that come up, because we're thinking about this new ability to make transactions. But what happens with all the assets that are going on there, the content, whether it's from a broadcaster that wants to obviously get involved with this, whether it's a TV or radio, um, they can, their, their uh, assets can be either you, minted by our technology or their own, and we can incorporate that. There's a patent pending that allows us to work with all different coins, whether it's Polkadot or blockchain or Algorand. I mean, it's really, really cool that interoperability is, is happening. So people don't have to worry about, oh, I can't do that. You know, I, I can't do that on this platform because it doesn't work with that platform or I can't get paid right away because, you know, it takes time for it to approval. All those things are, are going away with this plat or have gone away with this platform. But as you see in the middle there, whether it's media production or M- NFT mint- minting, that happens on our watch. We do that 100% and just share that revenue. So in the middle, the fan engagement itself can be all these different things, Mike, that you're asking about. Is, is uh, the videos, or artwork, or tickets, or mem- whatever is happening. It could be the history of that player. So the so the the the, the player themselves um, can actually put their stuff and, and and keep access to that through their history. You want to put some old timer that has a jersey up on the wall, and he wants to have a VIP opportunity. He can he can mint his jersey that's up on the wall and give people access to it, and not even Again, I want to make this point, not necessarily have to sell it and own it, but maybe access to a VIP signing that's going on, you know, and it's, it's, it's access. It's not about, you know, f- uh, flippers and pump and dumpers and, and, and it's not about Las Vegas. It's not, it's about what actually is happening in that ballpark or in that rink or wherever the case may be. Um, letting people have access to their own content and when that player gets, sees money going down, whether someone sold that picture of that, of that, of, the, of that lacrosse player, someone sold that picture after, or that shot or that video, and they sold it after the fact, secondary market, that player gets a piece of that action. And that's really hard to do. And that's what's holding the whole thing up. We allow that to happen because of a smart contract that that particular player gets compensated for that. So it's really about fairness. And that is a key term that, that is exciting. It's very libertarian in this new democracy of data technology we have. Um, just right, to finish we, we up- have, We have, okay, one more. Just finish have, uh, okay. No, go ahead. Sorry, Mike, please. I just have a, like a minute 30 left, and, and that includes the, the total Q&A. So I just okay, let's, if anyone has any questions, yeah, just, let's, let's, let's jam on it. So my, my question, does anybody have a question? You can certainly put it in the chat, or if anybody just wants to chime in. I know it's a lot to cover. Um, what do you suggest would be the best way for us to follow up to learn more? Um, Contact you directly. I think the- I think me directly, and then we just talk about it because it's 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 different for everybody. This is not something that you have to do it this way. With Top Shots, you have to do it that way. It's fine. It's great. It's got us on the map. With 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 this platform, it depends on who what, what industry you're bringing into and who you're talking about. Um, and the idea behind it, it doesn't have to be huge. That's why I bring up Premier Lacrosse League. It's not huge, you know. There's 16 right. teams, but it's an entity in and of itself. I want this to be able to be used by the by the uh, the, the, the little league in your town, right? Maybe not for a year, 
until we get the, you know, the business model work through and, and things work. But my dream is for the little league to be able to work with it. And the grandparents are sitting there with their kids and they're sharing assets. And it's about history and making heroes in the community and compensating people because they're good people. The person that, 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 you know, the, the, the coaches that don't get paid, they do it for love. They don't have to get cash, but they can get access. They can get, you know, they can, they can be accrued in some way. And, and, and those kinds of mechanisms happening, we don't even know what they're going to be because we didn't have those tools, those Lego pieces to be able to play in our communities anymore. And now we do. And I'm really excited about that. So talking about your specific situation, um, you know, I can't, I, I can't cover it here, but I'm, I'm happy to learn, but also to get, get inspired and to inspire ways that you and your community your industry could actually use it and how it will, will apply. I'm gonna send a, some, a reading list out. I'll put, that, I'll put that in the chat sometime during today. So I'll put my contact information and a reading list that's made for beginners and intermediate and advanced. So it's, it's just kind of my, my way of saying, this is complicated here, learn yourself. It starts with the, uh, the NFT skit by Saturday Night Live. Um, from a few weeks ago that that's the first thing because you should read it and I have the lyrics on there because it actually makes sense and it's kind of funny and fun but it starts light and it ends up very regulatory and governmental but that reading list is something that I'll include in my signature so people can uh, educate themselves and give me a call because I'm dying to share this with 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 the world that that sees that that sees the opportunity in their industry um, no matter how obscure it happens to be um, and I think putting putting TRN on it, Mike, you and I have talked a little bit about that and we need to talk about how to actually deploy that, but, but that's maybe the best way people get involved with it. We'll build it into a platform and you'll have a, a platform that incorporates into your own um, and let it be exponential across different cities that you're gonna drop into and have modules that already fit in place that we're doing here in New York, let's say, right? And if we drop into different regions, we can actually have these, these formats already built and what platform are you gonna use for that? Here's a way to actually have transaction of commerce and sponsorships and, 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 and payments and um, you know, the valuation of things that people are creating, um, whether it's just in access. I keep saying that because it's not all about monetary um, investment, but it could be just access to it. And that alone is, is valuable for the TRN value proposition, just having- Would love, a, a, I'd love to learn more. Access. Yeah. Um, my, my takeaway um, is, is what I said earlier, is that this, in, and correct me if I'm wrong, it enables um, a community to share in assets that prior to this would have been um, lice, you know, restricted in terms of distribution because they are owned, the content is owned by, you know, the, the entertainment group or whatever it happens to be. Right. Um, then this, yeah. this makes it possible to track that and that track those assets and essentially monetize those assets and trade those assets. And the original entity that owns it has to take a deep breath and go, listen, we're going to make more by letting go a little bit. Right. But we still have a piece of it. That's what a smart contract is. They still have their, you know, what their requirements for it and let it kind of grow exponentially. I think that's we can exactly NFT, right. I think we can NFT each of your little videos and sell them, you know. Yeah. So. Well, that is, <laughs> and, and, and that, but that's that's exactly the point, man. It's like we can have fun with this because now we have these Lego pieces that we can figure out what we want to do with it. And, and your group, Matt. your community digs this stuff. Michael, right, I so, think this needs a separate, you know, webinar for you know forty five minutes to an hour. This is not a, this is not even a ten minute conversation. This ten minute gave me a room spin. I don't. Right. I mean, like I feel like I have vertigo from this. So right. I think that this needs like an entire forty five minute to an hour education where everybody can kind of Q and A and we're kind having of a barbecue going. at Mike's house right. in June, right. right? We're all going to Mike's house and we're just going to hang out and have burgers. And we're going to talk about this stuff. You're all invited. Um, um, I'm already, uh, I'm already vaccinated. I want to give Scott Lang a chance to speak first because he's got to jump out in four minutes. Um, so uh, Scott, can you, uh, um, and, and can you stop sharing? Um, yeah, sure. And I will put a, re a reading list in that will really help you with understanding stuff. A, re a reading list will be a good homework for you guys to, to, to stretch out and understand this stuff. Okay, and for everybody can go on mute except for Scott. So Scott's uh, video is, is highlighted. Scott, you are up. Thank you very much, Michael. That's very thoughtful of you. Hello, everybody. Uh, many of you I know, for those of you that I have not met, I look forward to meeting you digitally, virtually on Zoom or Scott at langmarketing.net is my email address. 
That's Lang with an E, marketing.net. Um, I'm in the partnerships and alliances business. Uh, last week, last session, I made a presentation. So many of you know that I've been focused about 50, 60% of my time on a philanthropic initiative called the Black Entrepreneur Initiative. And it's part of an organization called A Lonely Entrepreneur, which provides tools, knowledge, and uh, various templates and an online community to help entrepreneurs be successful. It's sort of a sidekick. It's a one-year subscription. Uh, we fund it through relationships with, like we have Richard Petty Motorsports, we have the Milwaukee Bucks, the Charlotte Hornets, the Lakewood Church. Uh, I just signed one of the major air courier shipping companies in the country. I'm waiting for the ink to dry to announce it. Um, uh, Edward Lewis is an ambassador along with 60 other eminent uh, Black, Latino, and uh, uh, women ambassadors that help us with underserved markets, which is where we're targeted. The other part of my business with Andre knows and uh, Dan Prince, if he's on the line, is uh, consulting brands uh, in a variety of different marketing topics. I'm basically an advisor to a few different companies. And I don't serve as an agency, but I point people to agencies. I make marriages and I take a fee for doing that or I'm on a retainer to do that for a client. And that's it. Yes, Scott's got some great stuff going on, and he's got a meeting in two minutes, so he has to jump, but I'm glad. I'm sorry, uh, I have to leave early. Yeah. That's quite That right. was very interesting, David. I've been in sports marketing since 1991, uh, when I was executive vice president of the Roadrunners for 10 years, and then on to other sports and, and so on. Michael knows a lot about my background, if you want to ask him to. Um, so I'd be very interested in talking with you offline about the NFT and, and Wade tomorrow. Thanks, right. guys. All right. So we're going to do, yeah, thank you so much. And we're going to do two minutes each. I'm going to do a put in the chat um, uh, the order in which people showed up. Oops, that's to Ashley. It needs to be to everyone. Um, so Howard, Andrew, Rajiv, Sharon, um, we'll do two minutes. Um, and the challenge today is tell us a little about a little bit about your um, biggest or most long-standing client and why they are with you for so long. Okay, so uh, who's up, did I say? That would be Howard. You're gonna have to go off mute. All right, thanks. Um, well, our, our, so uh, my company is Red Rooster Group and we specialize in working with nonprofit organizations. Our theme is well, uh, wake up your brand or wake up your marketing. We specialize in brand strategy, marketing and fundraising, those three things. Um, I don't know. We, we've been working with a group in uh, California that runs uh, 24 facilities for homeless uh, people, and that's a big problem nowadays. And we are we're on retainer with them for their fundraising, and so we do all of their campaigns, their annual campaign, their uh, seasonal events, um, you know, and so forth. Um, we help them raise two million dollars in the end of the year uh, campaign. I guess that's why they're with us. We help them raise a lot of money and do great work for them and we're now renewing contract with another um, organization where we're running a digital uh, campaign for them in dozens of countries and multiple languages and, and we exceeded their um, goals on the driving traffic and revenue and um, not revenue, driving driving uh, votes. They're, they're looking to get votes on an issue with email and uh, we uh, performed tremendously there and uh, at, at a lower cost per vote than they were achieving previously. Um, so clients are with us because we get results, <laughs> essentially. That's wonderful. And, and the, uh, tell us a little bit more about that vote. Was that like, uh, and that was an awards thing, right? Or is that something? It was, else? yeah. The client's called Genesis Prize. It's uh, it's likened to the Nobel Prize, Jewish Nobel Prize. They give out a million dollar award to a prominent uh, Jewish person. Uh, they've been to... Uh, uh, Michael Bloomberg, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Itzhak Perlman, uh, and others. The gift, the the million dollars though, is re-gifted to other nonprofit organizations or causes, and so it you know spirals the goodwill out. Um, and so the work that we do is on uh, we help them transition from an elect uh, uh, an elite selection committee to a public voting. Um, presence and so they have we do the nomination campaign or you know around the world you know to solicit nominations and then once we have candidates we do um you know promotion to get people to vote by submitting their email and so i'll uh, run through uh 
uh, Facebook and other platforms and generates on their uh, landing page um, to drive, um, drive the action there. Fascinating stuff. I know uh, when you were starting that, the making it public, the big risk was that you'd get like, you know, strange nominations or strange votes, but I guess you figured that one out. Yeah, there were a lot of risks there. Yeah, the brand reputation, getting the getting prominent people to accept this and kind of come out as not that they come out as they're Jewish, but you know, kind of be representative of the year and you know, and commit to giving to other organizations, things like that, and the technology risks and things like that. So yeah, it was a big hurdle that we were helped them to navigate. Great, thank you so much, Andrew Deutsch, then uh, Rajiv, then Sharon. Andrew, you are up. Two minutes. All right. Well, Fangle, my, my company, Fangle Group, is a global strategy first marketing and sales consultancy. We help our clients get right back down to understanding who their customer is and building a core strategy before they get to play with all those funny tactical tools in the toolbox that are worthless if you don't have a strategy. And we've been, we've been at it for a very long time, uh, helping companies grow our core basic story is that we help our clients turn every touch into voracious advocates for their brand here domestically and anywhere else in the world that they want to grow with our affiliations in about 120 different countries. Um, I would say our oldest client at the moment is a Brazilian end of line packaging distributor and now manufacturer. We've been helping them expand their ability to buy and sell uh, end of line packaging materials globally and worked with them directly to set up manufacturing for plastic strapping and water activated paper tapes that they sell in the South American market. Water activated paper tapes. I can't even imagine what that is. Well, you, when you get your box from Amazon that doesn't have BOPP, the, the, the clear plastic non-recyclable adhesive tape and it has a paper tape on it. Mm. The way that tape works is it goes through, it, it has a, a, an eco-friendly adhesive on it that when it gets wet, becomes active. So it's called water activated. And what happens is the, the machine dispenses it, it goes around the box. And now the box is completely recyclable without the pollutants of the BOPP uh, uh, polypropylene tape getting into the mix. Neat. But, and uh, and what, are you, what are you doing for them in 20 seconds specifically? Uh, right, right now, nothing because half of their staff is in the hospital or out with COVID. But we were working on, on a project to set up uh, relationships with three potential distributors in Central America for their, their paper tape line. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, coming back. Okay. Rajiv, then Sharon, then Bryce. Rajiv, you're up. Hey, Cody. Uh, so the question I'm answering is uh, why do clients uh, like us and choose us? Well, your, your longest, why does your, who is, you don't have to tell us who, but who is your longest standing client? Why are they with you? You know, why do they stay with you? Hmm. One of our longest standing clients uh, was one of the oldest churches in uh, New York City. And the reason why they chose to continue to stay with us is because we were very responsive, reasonable in accommodating most requests, uh, but also gave them that personalized attention that made them feel like a valued client. And I think that's the reason why they stuck with us uh, for as long as they have and continue to. And that's the same reason why, like our other clients that also have continued to stick with us uh, do so for the same reason. We're you know, extremely easy to work with and as they say, get along with. Uh, and that's one of the reasons. There are other reasons like our uh, prices are uh, fairly friendly uh, looking at New York City prices in comparison. But I think the main reason is the kind of attention, the level of detail in our work, as well as the consistency in the way that we service them as a client. And are, they, uh, pro are you providing them reputation management or more of the standard SEO work? Yeah, it's actually a mix of uh, social media marketing, uh, SEO, web design, video production, uh, and uh, standard stuff, up, which technically falls under reputation management, since there's a distinction between reputation management and reputation repair. Reputation repair being the deleting stuff, and reputation management, which is the content creation to establish a desired brand profile online. 
Thank you so much. By the way, there's a little buzz or something in the audio that you might want to address. Uh, I don't know if it's only me that heard it that way, but there was a little just buzzing. All right. Dr. So thank thank you. For the feedback, uh, Michael. Absolutely. Sharon, Bryce, and then Andre, uh, Andrew. Andre. There is no Andrew. I do have an Andrew, but uh, Sharon, you're up. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Hi, I'm Sharon Shanzer. My company is RLD Group. I am a print uh, designer and a web designer and a web developer. I work in the, on the print side. I work, you know, pretty much do anything, um, business cards, collateral, trade show graphics, packaging, anything that at some point either used to be printed or is still printed. And on the web side of things, I work in WordPress and Shopify, um, very high end sort of WordPress front end developer I can kind of do everything soup to nuts and uh, also help you with Shopify. My clients kind of run the gamut from very big companies to a lot of smaller individuals that kind of rely on me for everything. My background is in IT, so I'm sort of a, a hand holder. If anybody needs something that falls within the you know range of things that I might otherwise do, like set up their email um, for them, I can I take care of those kinds of things for my clients as well. So I'm sort of a, a business coach informally as well. Um, my longest one of my longest standing clients is a company called Bestimer Trust. It's a a sort of a quasi private bank. It's not a retail bank. Uh, originally it was a family owned bank and now it's a public to anybody who has a lot of money bank. And um, the reason that they use me for, I do a lot of different things for them. I do project management, I do print, I do production, I do PowerPoint. Um, I used, I play, I worked on a big event with them recently, which involved ordering tote bags and all sorts of things with the logo on it. Now they're moving to a new location, a new building. I'm project managing all the marketing materials that need to get done um, for the move, you know, in terms of signage and everything. So um, like many of my clients, they sort of stick with me because as Michael calls me a Jane of all trades, I'm still comfortable with Jack of all trades, but <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with the Jane of all trades. I wear many hats um, and I'm very responsive and um, I never say no to my clients um, pretty much ever. And so um, that's it, Sharon Chancer, RLD Group, RLD Group, um, print and web design and lots of other things in between. Thank you. Everybody. Timing. Wow, right on the nose. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So after Sharon, I said uh, Bryce, then Andre, then Henning. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Michael, for this as always. Um, I'm Bryce, the Google Cowboy. Um, we've been doing really good pretty recently with uh, with one of our products, Ad Cannibal. Pretty happy with how things are going with that. Um, basically, we save companies a ton of cash on uh, SEM. Um, and yeah, the, the longest <clears throat> client I've had is a crypto exchange in Vancouver here. Um, they've been with us uh, about a year and a half now. And yeah, we've got them some really consistent results. They're rank one for all the keywords they want to rank for. And uh, we've given them a whole host of consulting and assistance in some other areas as well, as well as a number of referrals. So they keep coming back because we keep giving them value. <laughs> so you're providing SEO services for them? Yep. So uh, mind of a marketer, uh, you want to explain sort of your evolution? Um, we started as basically a, uh, uh, an organic focused company. Um, but over the pandemic, my business partner created a, a whole host of really, really interesting technologies that we white label to other marketing agencies. So we essentially turned into a MarTech company and kind of a, a weapons dealer to, to give an, a, anybody on our side the coolest tech. <laughs> In fact, uh, yeah, just, we just had a conversation today with uh, one, of our mem the, one of our members who runs an agency and does a lot of advertising um, and uh, to tell them about uh, Ed Cannibal. Um, and, and the benefits that they can derive from that. And it's a, um, it's not only a, a, uh, a service, but it's one where they can make money. Uh, so they white label, um, white label it, and then they provide it to their customers uh, and make money doing it as well. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you so much, Bryce. And Bryce is out way out in Vancouver, Northwest there, holding down that corner of the, uh, the continent for us. Um, who did I have next? I had Andre Archambault. Are you there? Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Andre Archambault. I'm always impressed that Michael manages to not bungle the pronunciation. 
Um, I am with uh, a division of the USA Today Network. At the end of the day, we're, we're, we're really a pretty full service uh, ad agency. My uh, division was founded as an SEM shop about 17 years ago. I've been there about 11 years ago, and the folks who own USA Today, Gannett, bought uh, our company about five years ago. Um, and in that time, we have evolved from being uh, just an SEM provider to being a, really a full circuit uh, of web solutions. I had a call earlier today with the client, an e-commerce client for whom we're doing SEO. I had a, a, a we're also doing their Google shopping. Um, the full stack of programmatic and display stuff that we're doing today. And that probably the biggest differentiator between us and, and a lot of folks in our space is that we, um, we also have 150 to 170 sets of eyeballs that come into the USA Today Network every month. Uh, so we're not just um, a digital agency. We also have the ability to drive first party uh, audience to uh, brands and clients. You said 150 to 170. That was either thousand or million. Million, million. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I screwed up yesterday. I said 170 million eyeballs and someone chimed in. That means about 85 million people, right? And I sort of, anyway, uh, actually my, 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 one of my favorite success stories is actually a guy who, uh, who fired me and came back to me recently about six months ago. Um, he tried to make it on his own uh, for a good couple of years and uh, also went through a, a good handful of personal tur turmoil. And then about six months ago, out of nowhere, my phone rang. It was like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, uncle. <laughs> so uh, we have a lot of uh, success stories like that. And that's one of my favorite ones. This guy 10 years ago was installing basketball hoops in people's backyards uh, and is still a laborer, but does uh, a bunch of different stuff now, too. Wow. Thank you. All right. And uh, the company, uh, do you still use the Reach Local name? Not really. I, I tech, it's on my business card. I have an email address, but Reach Local as a brand name is probably going to be good nighted by year's end officially. All right. Henning Schwinnam, you are up. Yes, thank you, Michael. I'm Henning. I'm co-founder of Vendux, V-E-N-D-U-X. And we help companies solve their challenges in sales by placing sales leaders as contractors into the organization, very similar to the fractional CFO model or the fractional CMO model. Um, we've been in business less than two years and with COVID, um, really didn't start making placements until the middle of last year. So uh, to talk about longest standing client is a little challenging, but uh, um, one that I'm proud of is uh, a company I just uh, uh, connected with about two weeks ago. They were a software SaaS platform provider uh, to the construction for the in the construction planning segment to general contractors and architects and uh, they've been in business for six years and they have been plateaued at a million dollars in revenue now and you know weren't able to break the uh, sort of break that ceiling with uh, the founder being the sales leader and so they contacted us um, at the end of the day, they hired or they contracted not just a fractional CRO, uh, but also a fractional account executive to call on some of their really large targets. Um, and, uh, you know, why did they, uh, did they uh, come to us and why did they go for two individuals instead of one? Um, I think the the biggest piece is not about us or me. The biggest piece is about the fact that they realized and the founder realized that he didn't have the skill set to take the company from 1 million to 5 million and he needed to do something about it. That to me was the biggest driver. Wonderful. And how's, uh, how's California? You, have you found a place or are you settling in? 
We are still looking, um, but uh, every day that we're here, we're settling in more. Hard to leave. Originally from St. Louis, Kansas City. Kansas City. Kansas City. All right. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Henny. EB, you are up. I'm a newbie, a newbie EB. Um, hi, everybody. Background. I know a couple of you. Um, always a pleasure. Hello, Howard. Um, and so my longest Moss Appeal is a consultancy. Uh, I specialize in creating content that opens revenue doors. So my core competency is um, B2B and ad sales marketing. Um, and I would say that in its first incarnation, Moss Appeal's longest running client was Howard Levy. <laughs> um, yeah. Howard, Howard and I did um, quite a few projects together. Um, he did the creative concept for a client that won an award from the Cable Marketing Association. And then um, when I went back to the media business full time um, for other people, um, I, uh, I re-upped Moss Appeal at the start of the pandemic. And then Howard and um, a partner I introduced him to hired me again. So um, it's, it's a nice back and forth. Um, in this incarnation of Moss Appeal, um, I have several big projects going on right now. Um, and I just put them in the chat, which I accidentally started earlier. Um, I am producing a huge conference for NATP, which is the TV Programmers Trade Association. And it's on the intersection of TV and podcasting. Um, I'm completely overwhelmed and completely proud of what I'm managing to pull off with major heads of companies. Um, and then next month, the reboot of a publication for which I'm the editor in chief kicks in again, which is called The Continuum. And that's about the intersection of brand marketing and performance marketing. Um, and what, what the hell else did, oh, and I have a podcast called Insider Interviews. And um, I literally finished episode 32, the recording of that at 4.58 before I hopped onto this call. Um, and I interview senior executives in media marketing and advertising. Um, and some, the person I interviewed today is the head of an influencer agency um, last week was the head of podcasting for Macmillan Publishing. Um, and so that kind of thing. And I'm done. Thank you. And EB, you are our first non-member who's coming as a guest and to check out the experience. So um, uh, everybody perfect. else needs to impress EB <laughs> so that she joins and becomes a member uh, and an active participant. All right. Um, Ken Simon, then, oh, Scott already went. Ken Simon, then Rochelle, then Ashley. Hi, Thank everybody. You. Ken Simon, KBS Marketing. I work with small and mid-sized companies, helping them understand who their customers are and then develop the strategies for them to reach those customers through demand generation programs, strategic planning, et cetera, both online and offline. Um, I, I, I target mostly companies in the B2B, but also FinTech uh, manufacturing uh, areas and then technology. Um, my longest client um, I've been, has been with me for four years. I was with them when they were a startup. Um, they lend money to people who buy and flip homes. And when I first started with them, they were uh, only in the New York metro area. And uh, I, started as a project manager for them, helping them put their website to, together. But then we created awareness for them in the marketplace using search engine optimization, optimizing their website, um, and also developed campaigns uh, on Google, Yahoo, Bing, and Facebook. Uh, over the three years or four years, they've now expanded into eight states. And when I first started with them, they were doing Oh, probably about $100,000 worth of loans a month. Now they're up to like $15 million of loans a month. And they've grown to like 10 people. So uh, I get involved with every, anything from email campaigns with them to optimization, 
public relations. Depends on what they were looking for, you know, to anything and what plus offline marketing too. Interesting. That's a fascinating customer. So uh, yeah, so they're they're in the uh, in the nexus of, of finance. Well, I guess it's mortgage finance. But well, it was started revenue. by these two hedge fund guys who had no idea what marketing was, um, and they they got involved with. Uh, when I got involved with them, they were creating their website. And they had hired an Indian company, and they had no ad that was based out of India to do their website, and they couldn't figure out how to communicate with them. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are. Getting close to the end, but uh, Rochelle, then Ashley, and then I will go. Hi there, uh, Rochelle, and I always say it's dynamic business growth and not schlep along business growth. Uh, get, great example of a client that I work with. I worked with them for a little over seven years. Uh, family owned business in pest control. I love working with what I call non sexy industries, and you can't get less sexy than pest control. And it was a family owned business. It started out where I started to work with the father and son transitioning um, their working together. From there later on, what happened was bed bugs came into, um, into existence. We created an entire new vertical of industry, you know, of revenue, brought in millions of dollars of business. Um, and this was the greatest success story is the, uh, the, the son that took over the company was asked to speak at a conference in China. And their first presentation was, you know, he had a slide with like a hundred lines on it. And I said, are you hallucinating these speak? These people don't really speak English well. This will go through an interpreter. Are you out of your mind? So what we did is we redid the whole thing in, in pictures and we told funny stories. So the number one story was, you know, uh, he said, you think of, um, Bush had trouble with the UN? I did. And they said, you had trouble with the UN. What are you talking about? And he said, two weeks before the General Assembly, the entire General Assembly was infested with bed bugs. And then we had pictures of every world leader. And he goes, imagine if he went home with bed bugs and he went home with bed bugs. P.S. He got a standing ovation, was asked to speak in Europe in a conference. There was a guy in the audience that was from Tokyo. He came to America to check out and we trained the Tokyo division. I think he charged him like $150,000 for the training because we had the whole thing set up. In short, it was such a success. He had such a master in the entire in Northeast with bed bugs that a major uh, national brand bought them out. Literally was seducing them to pretty please let me write you a check because you have the exact area of expertise that we know nothing about. So that was one of my favorite success stories. And Next I have other story. clients that I'm working with for 10 years. I mean, I can go on and on. <laughs> Michelle has a, an endless bounty of energy. Yes. And, uh, and, and great stories too. Yeah, Always. That's what, she's, that's what she's all about, those stories. Storytelling okay. or boring telling. Exactly. Ashley Stevens, this is your first time, so welcome. Yes, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm also a, a newbie. Um, so I, I, I've i been in um, integrated marketing and events, um, sort of sponsorship and, and partnerships for over 15 years. Um, I mostly have experience at media and entertainment companies. Early in my career, I started at the Food Network, um, working in creative services and marketing. And then I went to the Tribeca Film Festival to focus on events. Um, that was in the sponsorship department. I did private events for um, Apple, for American Express, um, you know, all the, all the sponsors. Um, and I jumped over to um, Momentum Worldwide, which was the activation agency for American Express. So I did events for Platinum and Centurion. Um, I did three concerts with Elton John in small venues that you couldn't get into unless you had a black card. Um, and then I worked with Advertising Week, um, the event in New York, um, and I, was, I did all the private sponsor events, um, breakfast, lunches, dinners, concerts, and then was part of the team that launched that in London. So that was, you know, really exciting. We went over there and developed new relationships with vendors, et cetera. Had, Google dinner at Abbey Road and uh, opening gala at St. Paul's Cathedral um, and, and some dinners at Kensington Palace. Um, I was most recently with Modern Luxury Media, which is a print magazine company primarily um, in 22 different markets. And I was in the national marketing team. So I executed programs and, um, and mostly events for clients like Tag Heuer and, and Porsche. 
Um, and I have been looking for a new job for a while <laughs> since losing my job due to COVID because of events, but um, I'm sort of seeing things come back and I've been working on a couple of projects uh, since then, but, but really just uh, hoping to you know, see live events come back, which I think they are um, tentatively, but it's looking good for Q3, Q4 this year. So I'm glad to be here and, and connect with all of you. So you're both looking for a job and also doing project work in the, particularly in events or something else. Is that in events, I mean, I, I've been having a lot of good conversations about projects now. Um, I've mostly been doing volunteer projects. I did a, a great um, Zoom event series for, I went to Stuyvesant High School in the city. So I've been doing like a lot of virtual events for them and I joined the board of directors. Um, and I've just, you know, been, been, trying to get some projects going now and it seems promising so so that's good wonderful thank you so much i'm going to switch to gallery view um, and do my little presentation um so at last two minutes uh my name is michael bendit as all of you know um and my primary business besides this which is uh part of my my networking efforts is uh selling software development services or so representing software development teams um, and we do a lot of work in the marketing space, hence the, the, the network. Uh, also, we work with startups. And the reason people come to me is because they don't know where to go for the right technical resources, or they have run out of capacity within their own capabilities, uh, or they run into an opportunity that they'd love to take on, like an agency would love to take it on, but they don't have the technical skills in-house to manage it. Um, so one of my uh, uh, best clients is a, is a small agency. There are about 15 people here in New York. They are a digital marketing agency. Um, and they have sometimes one, sometimes two developers in-house. Um, they do all of their design in-house. Um, but they've run into capacity issues, constraints a number of times. And they rely on uh, my teams, uh, particularly my WordPress team, to supplement their capabilities. Um, and they just keep on feeding us work because uh, you know, I have a, an excellent team that is a dual shore team. So they've got some resources here in the US, the, the people that are client facing, and then their, their um, uh, developers are offshore. So um, they've got a great, you know, the great ability to really deliver um, at very affordable rates and the client who is an agency marks it up and you know it's still very competitive. Um, so those are the types of clients I love to work with uh, in particular um, are those small um, digital agencies that could use the extra help technically um, and we do solve problems for them. I mean, one of the reasons why I start with some of these agencies is because I'm willing to um, and my teams are willing to take on really small projects um, to get to prove ourselves. You know, we'll do a thousand dollar project um, because we know there's going to be more coming if we if we do the right thing and we always try to do the right thing. Um, so it is exactly six o'clock. I really appreciate all of you joining um, and we made it to the T. Um, and um, I'm going to clarify in my next newsletter exactly what you have to do to, to link in. It's not a apparently anymore a direct Zoom link. Um, you have to register. Um, and then you'll get the link. So thank you all. Um, enjoy the long weekend, uh, Memorial Day weekend. I think uh, we're supposed to have pretty good weather, at least here on the East Coast, Northeast. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Michael. Wonderful evening. Take mm -hmm. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you, everybody.